and let us all that we can to build a better future. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and hand over to Daniel. You got a story about our best friend in the whole wide world, uh, yeah. Justice Thomas. Yeah, uh, Justice Clarence Thomas actually like did an interesting thing, a very interesting thing, and we're going to talk about it. And his point is that cannabis ban is no longer necessary, <laughs> which for Clarence Thomas to say uh-huh. is something else. What? Last guy to, I'd expect. But doesn't our president still disagree with that? Yeah. No, Clarence <laughs> Thomas, the, hey, whatever Scalia says, yeah, I'm going to do that guy. That's the guy that's like, this is too much. Warren Drake, too much. Or the, Anyway, let's talk about it. The U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas on Monday said the federal ban on the cultivation and use of marijuana within states, quote, and so just for Kyle's reference, I'm not talking, this is not me saying it, this is, this is Clarence saying it, may no longer be necessary or proper. And that inconsistent uh, enforcement led to traps for marijuana businesses. Thomas issued the statement uh, in the connection with the court's refusal to hear an appeal by a Colorado marijuana dispensary that, to block the Internal Revenue Service from obtaining information about its business. Quote, I believe that the Justice Thomas was explaining to Congress the problem with the current mixed messages sent regarding cannabis. <laughs> James Thorburn, Thorburn, a decent name of uh, the law of the law th- for of Thorborn Thorborn. <laughs> Say that three times. Fast. It's it's <laughs> law group. A lawyer uh, for standing uh, Kimbo said in an email: "The court is giving Congress a chance to fix the problem. If the problem is not fixed, the court may uh, not be so charitable next time." Considering uh, the position, according to court filings, the International Revenue Service is investigating whether Standing uh, Akimbo, which is the company, improperly accounted for business expenses like rent and salaries when calculating its taxable income, which the tax code does not permit for businesses dealing in controlled substances. So you can't do expenses like we do expenses. They're sort of really important to do and to not have access to that, to not be able to... Kira, can you imagine like not being able to write off anything for your business? That would uh, be no, a I mess. No, I can imagine that. It would, def- yeah. it would really be a mess. Espe- well, especially for small businesses. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Colorado has legalized medical and recreational use of marijuana. So here we have T- Clarence Thomas, the guy who doesn't speak <laughs> and agrees with everything Scalia did, <laughs> is saying, why is this illegal? Why, why are half the states legally doing this? And this is all happening because they tried to file taxes. And the IRS is like, you're not allowed to do that. You're uh-huh. a bad company. You're a very bad company. And they're like, no, we'd like to, you know, get deductions. And we'd like to not, we'd like to pay still more than, you know, every major corporation's paying, apparently. Uh-huh. So um, yeah, it's just it if, just blew my mind that he was saying that. All right, so 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 here let's let, let's let's just get down to to the point of this story. Everyone's realizing that it's all up. It's all over about the war on cannabis. I mean, personally, I think the war on drugs is a waste of time, and we need to end it because Agreed. it's because it's funding the prison industrial complex, and it's it's causing the destruction of a lot of communities all across the country, and we're still suffering from an opioid crisis. But when it comes down to cannabis. Turns out, guess what? It can be used to get people off their addiction of opioid and other heavy drugs. Cannabis has a lot of important materials in it that can actually get this people show, well. Let's just be real. This show is pro cannabis. This show runs on cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> we do. I, don't, I love we weed. Do. The majority of people that work at Hardlands or 99 Perspectives use cannabis. Yes. Definitely. Uh, well, yeah, and, but here's the thing. Again, there's a majority of states now that have voted to legalize it for recreational and medical use. And more and more states are following suit. The narrative that corporate Democrats and Republicans have been using, it's over. Corporate media, it's over. It's a waste of time. And I want to quote somebody who I actually had the privilege of interviewing a while back. Willie Wilson, who was one of the mayoral mm-hmm. candidates, when asked about the legalization of cannabis, he was a mayoral candidate not only uh, in 2013, but also in 2019. Uh, yes, legalize it. Everyone's going to smoke it anyways. There we it's go. It's hilarious. It's, 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 it's one and done. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Th- this whole thing on cannabis, it's over. No need to bring it up. It needs to be available for everyone. End the war on drugs. That's, that's my opinion right now. End the war on drugs because it's stupid. You know, Kira. Really so, quick before we, you know what's crazy that I just realized? Uh, the amount of money that we've spent fighting the war on drugs is about the same as the war on Afghanistan. Really? How are you going to pay real? for it? Really? There we go. Yeah. How are you going to pay for this buckets. war on drugs? Yeah, there we go. That's silly. And I just had one point on this story, which was 
of course, Justice Clarence Thomas is speaking up about this. It impacts business. Oh, yeah. business. And that's what I'm saying. This is that turnover I was talking about with your story. It's just at some point, the old way of doing things dies because of market forces, which I always think, especially for people that are fighting against those market forces, is just really funny.